In the fabric of our cities, what are the elements that define local identity, spark a conversation and hold community together? And how do you recreate these places if they all of a sudden disappear? On the east coast of New Zealand's South Island, Christchurch has been grappling with these questions since 2011 when a string of damaging earthquakes hit the region. The dent of the disaster is still very much apparent here, but a new generation of creatives has taken the opportunity to reimagine the city. A group of bold architecture enthusiasts are going to great lengths to preserve a strand of modernist architecture that's become known as the Christchurch style. This unique blend of British brutalism and Scandinavian aesthetics rooted in vernacular architecture took hold in the 1960s and 1970s and shone through a range of commercial and residential projects commissioned by forward-thinking locals. Among them were the young Munro family who had their dream house designed in 1964. So, they bought a cheap piece of land and put all their money into the house and commissioned uh, New Zealand's best contemporary architect at the time, Warren Amani, to design this little family house, sort of in the style of a Welsh barn. They lived here for many, many years, loved the house so much, and we were so fortunate to find it. Their intent and their optimism when they created this little home still permeates the place and we find joy in this house every single day. Idyllic as it may seem, it didn't always feel that rosy to the current owners. The fascination with the house was set off by a copy of the architect's plan, but it was hard to see what actually remained of the abandoned home on the overgrown plot. The couple bought the house without having stepped inside. The very first time we came up here, I was pregnant with our son. I was about six or seven months pregnant and we walked in and walked upstairs and I just burst into tears. <laughs> I really I really didn't know what we had done and I didn't see it and I didn't see it for what it was. All I could see was a huge dump. Um, some of the walls were purple. Half of the window sills had fallen off. There was mold inside. There was ivy growing inside the house that had wound its way through the windows. Um, a lot of the doors and windows didn't open. And yeah, I cried. The couple embarked on the painstaking restoration and managed to make the house just livable in time for their baby. But shortly after, the earthquake struck and concrete blocks popped off the recently renovated building. If we'd wanted to, we could have got the house written off from an insurance point of view and from a financial point of view that could have been quite lucrative for us. I mean it never even occurred to us not to repair it. Right from the first day we were hell-bent on getting it repaired and working out how we could do that and, and there were a number of times that we had to fight quite hard. The interior of the house, the floor is made of brick quarry stones and um, they slumped quite a lot and one of the repair strategies that was put forward was to actually lift the entire floor and replace it with a modern tiled floor. Um, and we had to go to some lengths to get them to use some technology that meant that we could just pump up the existing floor and re-level it without removing anything. Every single part of the, the process involved decisions like that where we were offered something more modern and more contemporary and, and up to code and we had to fight to sort of keep things in the original state they were. It wasn't a fun experience, but we're really glad we did, and we feel now we've got a house that is going to be here for another 100 years. The heightened awareness of valuable architecture that survived this earthquake has seen people move into these extraordinary homes, even if it means sacrificing comfort and convenience. This young family recently exchanged the lauded Mesa V House by Alan Michener for an ocean-facing cottage, updated to a 1970s design by Nicholas Kennedy. When you're living in a house that was designed in a different time, you obviously um, have to alter the way that you live slightly, and so you compromise in some ways. The Maservi house, for example, is a huge amount of glass and it's all single glazed, and potentially there's some people that wouldn't want to live with that, especially in the Christchurch winter. You figure it out as you live in the spaces, and I think here, you know, we've got a lot of doors and windows that open out to 
different sides of the house. So when it's really hot, you know, it's learning like what we best open to get that kind of passive ventilation and things. You kind of work with the house and not against it. Living in these houses is a 24-7 field trip into designing for an enduring appeal. While the materials have been innovated, there's still much to learn about a sense of scale and balanced form. I mean, I love the use of natural materials, and so the concrete block and the timbers and things I find really interesting. Um, but yeah, the colour palette is something else that I've found sets the houses apart and so there's um, the kind of rusty red colour used for all the window joinery and then there's some kind of sort of seafoam green used in the um, wardrobes and then another kind of dark maroon used upstairs which I mean they they actually are probably quite I don't want to say fashionable because it's the wrong word but I think people are rediscovering like using these colours again. There have been really enduring choices. I wouldn't even consider changing them. It makes me think about how I might sort of use colour in my design and yeah, it, it really, it's been fun to live with. As people are waking up to the rarity of these designs, the Christchurch style buildings are increasingly seen as singular projects worth safeguarding rather than as development opportunities. It is really interesting from a real estate perspective because I go through a lot of houses and um, as soon as I know that it's one of these 60s or maybe 70s architectural houses, I go in like just incredibly excited and sometimes you walk in and sort of, what have they done or who's done whatever they did in the 90s or something like that and it's awful but then every once in a while you see one that's absolutely immaculate, every alteration's been done. Um, in keeping and, and it's fantastic. It's quite fun. It's like a little treasure hunt around town and you sort of get a peek of a white concrete block gable and you start thinking, oh, what's that? And uh, eventually find out who's designed it and uh, what it's like inside and things. The multiple waves of the 2011 earthquake left 80% of Christchurch's inner city demolished. Few identity-defining buildings survived due to the prohibitively high cost of repairs. One that locals refused to lose was the town hall, designed by Miles Warren and Maurice Marnie, a prime example of New Zealand's modernist architecture. When it was restored and reopened, uh, Christchurch came back and fell in love with the building again, just like they, like they did when it opened in 1974. And it was such a heartening thing on the weekend, uh, it was open to the public. There were queues around the block to walk through the building. I really feel that any building that is loved um, will remain relevant. A beloved example of this belief is the office of a young architecture studio, PRAU Limited. The three strong team have made it their mission to return the space to its original beauty, as imagined by David Allen in the 1970s. The basic idea for the studio itself was to strip the building back and really highlight those architectural elements from the era. So show off the, the construction, show off the concrete block, rip back all the, the suspended ceilings and expose the concrete ceilings. I've always admired this building and always thought it was fantastic. So it was like when the opportunity came up, it was so good to do something to the building and have our practice in there because it sort of, it fits with what we do and the kind of architecture we want to produce. From lovingly restored homes to progressive designs that echo the Christchurch style, the city is finding a renewed confidence and pride. While much was lost to the earthquakes, they did make Christchurch reconsider how it wants to be known. It's notoriously been pretty conservative and pretty stuffy, I guess. And then the earthquakes sort of allowed, as bad as they were, allowed sort of people to re-think sort of about how they wanted the city to be and how they wanted to live. And it's getting to the stage now where it's starting to get, like you're seeing some exciting things happen. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. It's nice to, to be in a location that you can actually sort of add to that and push ideas, I guess, yeah. <laughs>